Good Monday, my friends. I actually found an interesting article that I thought we could all talk about today uh, instead of a normal video because this is some interesting technology that is out there regarding ray tracing and how it's been used and whether or not NVIDIA is actually innovating with it. I kind of want to have that discussion today surrounding this uh, article that I found posted on the hardware subreddit because it's about Imagination who uh, owns PowerVR and they have a 6XT GR6500 mobile G GPU, which is the equivalent of a GPU that you would find on, let's say, a $150 tablet, actually running ray tracing at six giga rays per second, which is the exact same performance that you'll find on the ray tracing cores of the RTX 2070. So a mobile GPU matching the ray tracing performance of a $600 graphics card it's interesting. I, this is not meant to be a, a video where I'm going to bash the RTX cards again because there are things that NVIDIA is bringing to the table that just never happen with this Power VR GPU. And there's some things I want to discuss along those lines. So don't take this as a bashing video, nor take this as a video where I'm saying these graphics cards aren't worth the price because that's not at all the point of this video. The, the idea is just to show you that this technology is actually pretty cool and this may have some implications for the fact that maybe AMD might not get left behind in the dust when it comes to ray tracing because there's some in interesting connections between PowerVR and AMD that, uh, that could come up in the future as we see with Navi. Potentially, just saying. So if we take a look at this YouTube video, which came out in January 17th, 2016, you'll see right there from Notebook Italia. This is at CES 2016, where they're showing off the performance of this ray tracing card that is basically all the same shadows that you're seeing in NVIDIA's demos, all of the same things that are happening there. It's just basically exactly the same. They're, they're doing hybrid rendering. So it's both doing ray tracing as well as the rasterization method, just like NVIDIA is doing. You can see in this part of the demo right here that right, you can see the ray tracing in the puddle right there in the windows. And then when they turn off the ray tracing, you can see that the rasterization is still there, but the ray tracing is completely gone. You can see it's outperforming the 9 ATI quite substantially in the real-time ray tracing renders that they're doing here. There, there is some discrepancy in that the demos that they were using didn't use global illumination, which some argue would slow down the demos, which is totally fair, but it's also the same reason that NVIDIA is trying to push uh, hybrid rendering with their RTX cards as well. And that's why they're supplementing it with the Tensor cores so that they can get faster performance out of fewer rays and create a better demo overall or a better gaming experience rather. But you can see that they, Power VR even partnered with Unreal Engine 4, they partnered with Unity, they partnered with Octane Render. They actually had software support behind this. This is actually a Vulkan demo that's running right now. And it's nearly the same uh, ray tracing performance that you would that Nvidia basically showed off in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where it was terrible textures with like really great shadows. And that's essentially what's happening here. And you can see that there's ray tracing going on right there. And before they turn ray tracing on, the, the frame rate's at a certain consistency, and then it slows down, slows down quite heavily as soon as they turn ray tracing on. There you go. And this is from May 24th, 2017. So this is a year later than the original video that was posted by Notebook Italia. But it kind of shows that the technology has actually been there for quite some time. This is interesting for a few reasons because NVIDIA is trying to push this as some great fancy technology that's brand new. And to some extent, it absolutely is in the fact that they're bringing it together in one complete package. We're gonna get ray tracing in a graphics card from ray tracing cores, and then it's gonna be supplemented by the tensor cores using for AI denoising as well as deep learning super sampling, which creates a much better image overall. So NVIDIA is bringing innovation to the table. However, in terms of pure tracing of ray performance, performance, they're actually not giving us anything that you couldn't find from a $150 smartphone GPU. And one of the most interesting things that I saw about like this journey of finding what PowerVR actually had over two years ago was a forum post in a non-tech where somebody posted the real-time ray tracing rendering that PowerVR was able to manage. And they said, so what is this and how do you think it's going to affect the GPU market and current NVIDIA dominance once it's released? And what the second response was, it's hardware accelerated ray tracing. It'll mean nothing in the GPU market when no games support it, which is kind of also where we are right now. It, there is going to be more games that are coming out, but by the time the RTX 2080 is actually in 2080 Ti are actually even released, 
There's no official ray tracing games on the market. Shadow of the Tomb Raider launches September 14th, but its ray tracing support isn't coming until sometime later. I think the most telling response was actually towards the bottom where they said AMD or Nvidia could drive hardware accelerated ray tracing once we've reached the end of the transistor technology for a while, but let's talk about now and the immediate future since instead, since that's a long way off, that was posted July 24th, 2016, after the 1080 came out. Who, who would have known that buzz killer that uh, you know the next GPU and video is going to release would have real-time ray tracing. So one of the more interesting bits about this and one of the reasons why I kind of want to bring this up is because the ray tracing technology that we're seeing is actually on a mobile GPU. It's actually in something that looks exactly like this, that this is what powered six giga rays of ray tracing performance. This is not hard for NVIDIA to try to buy out of power VR to do, or even as we read in the subreddit comment section, a lot of Imagination employees also work at AMD now. Since Imagination got purchased by another firm, there's a lot of brain drain on the company and they've moved elsewhere. And even Imagination themselves now lists their power VR ray tracing under legacy GPU cores. So not only were they ahead of their time, but they've also already discontinued the entire VR ray tracing thing. Um, and you can see that basically they had nearly everything that NVIDIA was showing off at their demo a week ago with hybrid rendering, with global illumination, fully ray trace rendering, visualizer from Maya, baked in light maps with Unity 5, with Unreal Engine 4, with Octane Render. This is essentially everything that everybody is hyped about for ray tracing two years ago. And it appears that the biggest failing in all of this was that PowerVR was never able to find a market for it. And as much as we could say that NVIDIA is not innovating with ray tracing because a company had this years ago, they are able to actually market in a way where it could potentially be successful. And we have to give credit where credit is due. NVIDIA, if anybody, is going to have the power, the money to actually pay game developers or give them the hardware support necessary uh, to bring this to games that we actually want to play. So as much as we can talk about NVIDIA not releasing cards that are actually that much better than Pascal, that the only way they're getting better than Pascal is because they're adding CUDA cores and upping the clock speed and making bigger dies, that that's all in itself an argument but at the same time they've realized that this is probably the best way forward for computer graphics even if the marketing that they're pushing behind it is a little suspect it might be a little uh facetious of them to say that they're uh doing real advancements in real-time ray tracing since you know there was a, a a small little graphics card from a smartphone that was out two years ago that could do the same giga ray performance as what a 600 dollars gpu from them can do so that's basically the video this is a cool technology that existed years ago there's power vr brought real-time ray tracing to the consumer market ages ago and nobody batted an eye, but now that NVIDIA is promoting it, we might actually get it in games that we actually want to play and enjoy, which is a good thing. And hopefully we can see some of the transition from Imagination employees to AMD mean that Navi could have some ray tracing coming in their GPUs so that they're not lagging behind NVIDIA all that much, but it also looks like it's probably not that hard of a feat to match the ray tracing performance. The biggest advantage that NVIDIA has is their AI tensor cores, which help to denoise the image, which give deep learning super sampling and provide an advantage that AMD likely isn't going to match with their feature sets. So tensor cores, probably the entire reason why the GPUs are so expensive, not the ray tracing cores, because uh, as you can see, ray tracing was on a mid-range smartphone thing. I mean, if we look at the cost of a Titan V, it had what, 640 tensor cores on it, which basically gave it a $3,000 price tag. The RTX 2080 Ti, which has 580 odd tensor cores, only costs $1,200. I'm, I'm gonna guarantee and say that the tensor cores are basically what we're paying for on the new NVIDIA GPUs. And it has nothing to do with the ray tracing cores because the ray tracing cores can be matched by something that was a little cheaper back in the day. But what do you all think? Is this exciting for you? Do you guys like videos like this where I find something interesting and I bring it all to you and we just have a conversation about it? Obviously, I'm not a game developer. Obviously, I'm not uh, fully clued up on all of the ways that ray tracing can actually practically be done in video games. So I'll open it up to uh, me potentially having said some words that uh, don't match with the actual reality of things but I I mean the the point here is to get the conversation going and to discuss what could be coming up with AMD or what potentially could have been had imagination ever had any marketing sense and brought this to actual customers 
a few years ago, and we maybe wouldn't be having some discussions about NVIDIA right now. Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys all have a free pass at commenting on this down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button. If you did enjoy this kind of video, please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.